keep looking for Gary to come in. Hopefully he's going to be here today. Uh, and I noticed I had him in the video a lot, but I think it's, that it was, he's in a lot of pictures because he does a lot of things in the church, but uh, it's very important that we see and honor the man of God. And I might be the one doing most of the speaking, but I can promise y'all the core of this church is the heart of that man. And, and uh, I, I was thinking, that, you know, Melissa, I guess she's doing Sunday school. Melissa, our daughter, uh, put on there this morning that a picture of him and said he's a father to the fatherless. And Gary Weeby's been that. And most of y'all know Melissa's not our birth daughter, but we have two birth daughters. And then we were foster parents for 14 years and had a lot of kids through our house. And I promise you, if you do that long enough, you're gonna you're you're not gonna get un, you're not gonna come away with at least one of them that's forever. <laughs> you just can't stand it. Every one of well, some of them you were kind of glad when they left. I admit, but <clears throat> most of them you were. Can we be real around here? Let's. <laughs> you think this stuff's easy? You think oh no? And plus, we foster parented teenage girls mostly. So you can imagine, it was a very difficult uh, group to have, but what a blessing, and Melissa was one of those that became ours, and, uh, uh, and we see the generational thing that happens when we give our lives, uh, don't be surprised what God wants to do with you. He's looking, uh, you know, the army said, looking for a few good men. I tell you, he's looking for all of us, because he's got purpose in all of us. And that's part of our job here. It's part of our duty to, to the, from the garden, God's heart was to be fruitful and multiply. We have some, we have generational things that we're to pass on. This morning when I, I was worshiping, I heard myself uh, saying words. It was funny because I probably say it without even thinking, but it just like, I heard myself saying glory, glory, glory. And um, what I heard was my daddy's voice because that's the words my daddy used to say. Everybody has their praise words. Some people, I'm a hallelujah person. I just, woo, hallelujah. It just comes out of me. Some people's praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. These are all terms of praising him. You kind of have your niche. If you don't, you need to start practicing. Open your mouth and saying something. Let it be, come out of you. And daddy would say, glory, glory, glory. I, and I heard myself saying that and I started smiling. My daddy's still a little bit alive here because he's got some of that in me. We are to pass on some things that's given to us. And we're without excuses, we learn today, no matter what was or was not given to us from our natural fathers, we have a spiritual father that has all knowledge and all power in heaven and earth. And he is open and ready to pour it out on us. And so we've been studying about uh, the king, King Jesus, that this is year of the king. And um, I also realized that we, have, we study a lot on some other aspects of God. Uh, I, I don't think I've ever just done a study or heard a study where it's any length of time or uh, uh, about him being king. What we talk a lot about him, and today we've talked about him as being father. We see God as father. And, uh, and if we see him as father, then we see ourselves as his children. And so in looking at him in that aspect, we learn some stuff about him. And we learn some stuff about us. We learn that he, as a father, he's, he's the one that's over us and he cares for us and all the things. He trains us. Fathers, I think about fathers, I think about training, I think about discipline. Uh, and fathers are providers and protectors, but they're, they're sort of the one that he says, Fathers, uh, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. Okay, now that's some, that's some King James words. But I learned this really well when I was teach, uh, being a chaplain to incarcerated young men, that I was a part of that for many years. And I realized that scripture, that there had been a lot of young people provoked to wrath. Provoked. There's some stuff happening that just provoked them, that poked them along, that caused them to have some wrath. And wrath is not just anger. But wrath is old anger. And wrath is revengeful anger. Now, we just heard a perfect example of that with Bobby, didn't we? He talked about how he had some, he didn't, didn't buy him anything else, didn't want to go see him. Here he's a grown man having to force himself to drive to see his father. But see, there's some things we can do to provoke to wrath. But he said, instead of doing that, then he told you that what to do. God's not just somebody going to point out the problem. He's always got the solution, right? He said, but bring them up. Bring them up. First of all, you bring them up. 
Not the streets bringing them up. Not, not grandma bringing them up. Not mama bringing them up. Not, not the TV bringing them up. Not now it's the, the, the electronics bringing them up. No, you bring them up. Because you, you could be in the house and still not be bringing them up. You know that. You can be so absent in your mind. You're, you're thinking a job. You're thinking. About, so bring them up. Just bring them up. Be there. And then he said, in the nurture. Oh, well, I can discipline. That hug and stuff, that all hooey gooey, that's mama. No, you need to learn how to nurture. And he said, in the admonition of the Lord. In other words, the ways of the Lord. Now, I, I, this is not in my notes, so who knows where we're going today. But, and, and, and so these things can sometimes make you feel bad. No, it shouldn't make you feel bad about what you, it's a, it's a, it's a saying, it's, we can do this today. This is important. This is important. And so some of these things, we see him as father and we see ourselves as child. And when I look at myself as a child, I, I know some things about me. I'm like, well, that means I got some growing to do. I got a father who loves me and I'm his. When you see him as father, it means I'm his offspring. He is responsible for me. That's a good thing. He bought me with a price. I'm, a, I'm his adopted. I'm his child and he is responsible for me. And, and, uh, uh, that means I don't, I don't, I have somebody that's, that's got me covered, but also lets me grow. He knows where you're at. I know some things about me. Let me move on. Also, we see him, we study God as shepherd, don't we? I think about David, King David, who said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. What's he do? He leads me by some green pastures, some still waters. And then we see God as a shepherd. We see him somebody who's leading us and guiding us. And then I see myself as a sheep. You know, sheep are kind of dumb. Sheep are willful. They just kind of like, la, 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 la. There's some green grass over there. Copperheads, but green grass. <laughs> There's a cute little ewe lamb over there. <laughs> oh, well, we won't go there. But, but we see him in these different avenues. We see him as father. We see him as shepherd. We also can see him as our companion or our spouse or our husband. He said, I'm the husband and you're part of the bride. And so when I see him as my companion, I think about him being the lover of my soul. That's an intimate God. He loves me and I love him. We walk together and care and he's the lover of my soul. But also he told me this year, but you're going to study me as not just father, not just shepherd, not just the husband of the, of the church, uh, but I am king. Well, that brings a different connotation. If my father, he's sitting in there, I can run in the recliner and just crawl up in his lap. But my daddy, and I can do that when I'm at home, but if my daddy's on the throne, if he was the king, you don't just run up there and jump in his lap, do you? There's protocol. And, it's, and, there's, and why? There's because it's a different position. It's not just who he is, but it's a position he's in. My father is a father, but at the same time, he's in a kingship position. And a king is, is somebody who has dominion over a domain. He's over a certain area that's been put under his care. And there's something about a king that brings a different level. In other words, he's authority. He's authority. It means he's Lord. And, and uh, the word Lord, Lord means ultimate. I wrote it down here somewhere, but it's, he's the ultimate authority. It also means to be the controller you're my Lord and my King. You're my, my Savior and my Lord. And you've heard me say, a lot of people want saviors. We want him to save us, but we're not really wanting him to be Lord. Lord means you're the boss. You're the ultimate authority. You are, and I'm not. It doesn't matter what Pam thinks about something. If Father King Jesus says it, I can take it to the bank because he's done it because he's not just a good father, but he's a good king. And he knows what I need. And he knows what's best for his children. And the subjects in his kingdom. And so I'm a part of a kingdom now as a subject in his kingdom. And it said the word that's used there is master. It's a reverence word. It's not like you're the slave. No, but it's saying you are, you are king and you're a master. And, and so he brought this to me at the beginning of the year, uh, a New Year's Eve night sitting there. And he said, I, I am, this is the year of the king. Well, when you hear the Lord, when you know what he's spoken to you, and then it's, I had to seek that out. I'm like, okay, what do you mean? Well, but I want to say this. My first reaction, because the spirit spoke to my spirit and said, this is you're the king. My spirit like rejoiced. It's kind of leaped and said, oh, good. That means I don't have to be. 
I don't have to be. And so, well, I'm not a king. What have, okay, all that means is wherever you've been given domain. Now, as men, if you're, if you're the head of a house, that's your domain. And you're responsible. See, the truth is, if you, if you took a wife, you're responsible. Doesn't mean that, that we're not equals and far as, as, as in value, and, but we have, we don't have always equal positions. Our position's not equal. And so there, there is, there's order in the home, like there's order in a kingdom. And so when we find that it, it works, but he said, I realize now in this position here as pastors and that, that was the position I was looking at that night thinking it's a new year, what all's going to happen. I got to get the calendar out. And I was just feeling really overwhelmed with this sense of responsibility. And that's when he said, this is year of the king. And I'm like, oh, good. <sighs> you know what happens when you realize he's king? You get a load off your back. A weight is lifted. And so when I'm all burdened and thinking I got to do this, I've got to be mama to this, I got to be nana to this, I got to be pastor to this, I got to, and all of a sudden you get real weighed down with all those responsibilities, those little kingdoms that we have, aren't we? We all have. It might be the boss. You might be the boss at work. You might be the, just the, whatever. We have all these different positions that we're responsible for. If you have a child, you have a responsibility. If you've took it on uh, somebody that, that's, uh, that's a companion to you, you have a responsibility. But all of a sudden, I, I, I was realizing that I, if any time I really get in his presence and honor him as king, a load goes off of my back. I'll go, oh, yeah, I'm not. He's king of kings, lord of lords. In other words, we have some little kingdoms down here, but he's king of all of that. I don't have to be. I want this to be an encouraging to you today. Whatever load you're carrying, when you really realize he's king, you can go, oh, you got that. I don't even know how to do that. And that's what we've been talking about in life. There's many things we don't know how, how to do. I guarantee you, the day you got married, if you got married, you did not get some big, there's all kinds of books, but there's no really book to how to handle that woman. Probably any woman. <laughs> or that man. It's a responsibility. Don't really come with a manual that this is how it's going to happen when you have your first argument. When she says, you said everything's okay, and she says, fine. You didn't realize that fine don't mean fine. <laughs> she ain't calling you fine. She's saying, you don't want to talk to me right now. <laughs> oh, you start learning the language. You, we, we, we're complicated beings. So anyways, y'all are too. But anyway, they, 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 it's, it's, we don't really know how to do these things, and especially if you didn't have any role models. If you've never seen love work, if you've never seen mamas and daddies that, that, that stay together and don't hit each other and cuss each other out. I mean, we get foster kids at our house, and, and I remember one day I was, we were driving up in front of the middle school, and I forget it, had this little girl in the back seat, and I was going to say something to one of my kids back there, and I did, I went, hey, and I put my hand back like that. That kid hit the seat. I mean, she just ducked. And I was like, oh, you thought I was going to hit you. I said, I'm sorry. And, 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 and my daughter said, you, you ain't got to worry. Nobody's going to hit you in this family. See, I, I started realizing that, that, that everybody doesn't have the same uh, family, and you don't have the same things. And, and, and so there's, there, it's very important to know that I don't have to know how to do everything. That, that if I can submit to the king... And humble myself and admit I don't know how to be the best parent. I don't know how to be the best spouse. And I don't have to because I've got a father that says, if you would just stop and ask me for wisdom, I will give it to you. And I'm telling you, this is how we start getting when we realize that I have a king that I can go to. And like I've said before, and it's been so indelible in my mind when the Lord spoke to my sister just two weeks after that night when he said, uh, I'm, I'm king two weeks later on the 15th of January that my little niece would take her life and everything in our family has been flipped upside down and we have not known how to do this I, I was telling Richard this week he was, he was at, the, at the hospital with his dad he was in the process of his last breath and he, I, 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 can't, I don't think I can watch it and like you don't have to and, but anyway he, we talked about it and he went back in there and, 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 and he ended up holding his hand and, but I said Richard it's okay because you've never been here before have you ever been place you've just never been here before 
Well, that's when we say, I don't, but you have. And you are king, and I have you, and you have not left me. And it's a resource if we will humble ourselves and say, like the, the Lord spoke to my sister uh, that first week in the night, and he said, and the scripture came, it says, when my heart is overwhelmed within me, overwhelmed, when my job is overwhelmed me, my life is overwhelmed me, when I'm overwhelmed, he said, lead me to that rock that's higher than I. I need to get to the king, the ultimate Lord, master, king of kings. I need to go to the highest authority to help me know how to take care of what you've put in my hands. What dominion you've put here. Now, last week we realized that God will take unlikely people and put them in some places that you never thought you'd go. And he, he's just amazing. He don't, he don't pick us and take us and, and give us children or give us homes or give us jobs or anything because we know everything. He, he, he gives it to us because he's got purpose. He's got purpose. I believe wherever you are, there's purpose. And people are, not just kids are looking for identity and purpose. Grown men are and women are. They get to middle age going, what have I accomplished and you can beat yourself up over that. Bobby just made a little joke about it. Himself. He said, you know, I mowed, my dad, I mowed grass to buy my daddy that rod and reeled. He goes, I'm doing it today. Well, it's not, nothing wrong with mowing grass. He works for a great a, a lawn service and works for these people. But the truth is, and the reality is, if Bobby hadn't went around about a lot of circles around and around a mountain a bunch of different times, he probably could have been owning his own business by now. Y'all know that's, that's what happens when we just keep doing things our way. We want to be king. We want to know. And we tell our kids, honey, you can be anything you want to be when you grow up. You know that ain't true. Not everybody is going to sing like Mariah Carey. I can't even think of any modern singers. That, that's, most of y'all are not, not, not old enough to. Okay. Here's what I can be. I can be anything that he designed me to be. You tell your whatever he's put in you, honey, you can be anything God says you can be. And you need to seek him and find what that is. This is not just up to the guidance counselor at the high school to say, well, I think I just want to be this when I grow up. How many of us has gone through some different thises and even you go to college and you change your major several times? I believe we need to start instilling our kids young that you can be anything that God wants you to be and you need to find out what that is. So start seeking the Lord and taking the next right step and see where it takes us. I believe we have purpose and we got to pass this on. But I'm telling you, he can use you in things that you never thought you can be used. You can be, Gary did not have role models as parents. There's not, they're not good role models. But you know what? He has been an amazing parent to his girls and to other people's kids. And a bunch of hardheads. Like Bobby. Like a bunch of the rest of you. How did this man do it? Because at 17 years old, he surrendered his life to God for real. And said, you're king and I'm not. The younger we submit to the king and realize he's not just my father. He's king. He's not just my brother. He's not just my buddy. I had somebody say, one night we were here in Monday night, uh, Wednesday night Bible study. I'm going to be teaching this Wednesday. I really hope y'all can be here. Every week it's so good and we have different people. But um, we were talking about father. We were talking about knowing God as father. And somebody said, well, you know, I don't really ever think I've seen God as father. He's always been my best friend. He's just been such a best friend to me. Well, you know, that's great. He's a friend that sticks uh, uh, closer than a brother. He's a, he's a friend. He is that. But you know what? He's more than just your friend. You can get so buddy-buddy with him as your friend, and we're just going to go life, and you just friends will just agree with you, and hey. But all of a sudden, you start realizing, no, he's also father. He's training me. He's disciplining me. He's trying to get me somewhere. He's trying to help me grow up. But then also, and so that, and she said, I'm never, and you know, I saw a difference. I, I'm telling you, a difference came when she started seeing him as father. And you start seeing him as king, there's also going to be a difference. There's a lesser load when you realize that he's king. And I have a God that's really in control. 
All he's asking for me to do is submit my dominion to his dominion. Because in the garden, he said, I gave man dominion over this earth. And do you realize he does not come in here and override your will? What he wants you to pray is the Lord's prayer, not my will. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Not my will, but thy will be done. So if I get up every day and do it my way, I could end up like Elvis Presley. I could be singing, I did it my way, and I'm telling you, it didn't work real well for that man, did it? I don't care how, we all know him. He was a fabulous singer, songwriter, movie star, icon, but the truth is he died and in his bathroom floor like a common druggie. Had him former Miss Arkansas in the other in the bedroom. He died on the floor. Like people dying in crack houses today. All of that wealth and all of that fame and all that stuff, he still died like that. He was still a miserable man. Lost his wife. It didn't matter. I mean, you can gain all this stuff and you can you can destroy your relationships and you're you're miserable. See, God is trying to help us miss that stuff. By saying, I don't want to do it Pam's way. Man, I mess myself up every time because I'm limited. Even at my best, we're ignorant. That's what we've been saying. We've been talking about ignorance, holes in our hedge, things that we just don't know. And what's bad is when you're ignorant about being ignorant. You don't even know you don't know. And I thought I was going to get to deceit today. We ain't going to get to that either. To the point, actually, I get so, not only I was ignorant, but because that hole was in my hedge on ignorance, now I've got deceit and I'm living lies and thinking uh, things are not even true. And now I'm walking around and I don't understand some stuff. But God is saying, I don't need you to do it your way. If you will submit and let me be king, I'm, I've got your best interest at heart. I'm not just a father. I'm a good, good father. I am not just king. I'm your majesty. I bought you with a price. This is my kingdom and I'm bringing it to pass. I'm telling you, I, I found a, a prophecy. I didn't even know. I don't know. I wrote it down that somebody had said, he said, this is the year of divine interruption. That I'm going to interrupt your plans and show you my authority. This is somebody who has no idea. I forgot it was even, I wrote it in a notebook. I got up three o'clock in the morning on the night and got this notebook out and started looking. Thought I was looking for something else. The Lord brought it to me. This is the year of interruptions. I'm going to interrupt you. He said, even in mid-speech, and I'm going to show you my will. I believe he's doing a speedy thing. Does He said, it's time to get on with it. I'm fixing to interrupt your plans. And I'm going to show you who's boss. You know why? Because I'm tired of dilly-dallying around. You're wasting time. We ain't getting any younger, are we? I've got stuff for you to do. Your kids are watching. Your grandkids are watching. Your co-workers are watching. And it's time to get off the throne and let me be on the throne. Jesus, take the wheel. Are we ready? God, let him take the wheel. He'll take me places I could have never dreamed of going. Oh, talking about ignorance. Paul said, uh, Peter, I love this scripture. In uh, Acts um, 4, and I believe it's 13, he said, they saw, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, they, there is the high leaders. Here's Peter and John. Fishermen, fishermen. It, it lists up there the top who they were talking to. They said the rulers, the elders, the scribes, the high priest. John, Alex, the, all these high, the Kendrick of high priests, they were all gathered. They brought him in here and said, by what power have you done these miracles? Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, said to them, you rulers and elders of Israel. And then he starts speaking. He said, and when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, they perceived that they were ignorant, unlearned, and ignorant men. They marveled and took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. (laughs) Who was marveling? The highest leaders, religious leaders of that day, was sitting there marveling at these fishermen. He said, they're ignorant. They They don't know this stuff. And they're unlearned. In other words, they didn't, they weren't all taught in all the, all the uh, Jewish teachings that uh, Paul was going to be taught on. He said they perceived it. But then they said, wait a minute. Something different about these men. They're walking around here and doing these miracles, blowing our minds. And he said, they had been with Jesus. Do you know that when you get on your face before the King of Kings and you say, Lord, I don't know how to do this. 
Mr. Big Man here don't know how to do this. Miss Mama Sinner doesn't know how to do this. I, 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 I might be centered on weight meat. No, this is not, I am not the center. He is the center. I do not know how to do this. I am ignorant. I am unlearned. I don't even know where to start every day. I can think I know and I don't know anything as I ought to know. You come out of that room. Do you know your kids will know you've been with Jesus? There's just something different about you. When you take that jacket off your back and lay it at him and get up, I can go down so burdened thinking I've got to do all this myself. But when I really humble myself and give it to him truly and get to wrap my mind about it, no, you really do love me. You really do. You can do all these things. It's not me. I don't have to know how to do everything. When I give it to him, I get up. I can sing. I can leap up. Go down burden and come up rejoicing. And you know what? The people around you will perceive there's something different about you. On the other hand, there was a man named Paul who had an experience with the Lord. And Paul was a very different person than, than, than Peter and, and James there. Oh, I don't have time. I'm gonna just, I guess I can touch on it. But I'm trying to decide if I should go there. I may hold that till next week. Last week, I read about another man. I read about the man we know is the most wise man in the world. That's King Solomon. And we discovered that he did just what I'm talking about here. In 1 Kings 3, when God had given him a dream and asked him, what do you want? What do you need? And he answered him and said, oh, Lord, oh, now, Lord, my God, thou hast made me, you made thy servant king instead of my father, David. I am as a little child. I know not how to go out or how to come in. He'd been raised in the king's house. And now he'd become king. You ever had the mantle passed on to you? I remember when my grandmother passed away, you know, all the family came to grandma's for Christmas. We crowded in that little old bitty house down on a dirt street. I'm telling you, we crammed that house. We didn't care. I tell you, it's just, you, if you go see where that house is there, you just wouldn't believe it. But it, it's actually still kind of standing. But, but uh, and I lived two doors down. And we both, we lived right there. And we were very poor. But my grandma, you didn't know you were poor. You know, you didn't know. I mean, she got something very, but she went to the, we didn't have the Dollar Tree back then, but you had Duke and Ayers and Cresses and some of y'all, TG and Y. You know, she'd managed to have some little something. And, and have a, but we cram in that house and it was just, you didn't have Christmas till you went to Grandma Jod's house. But the year she passed away, boy, those first are hard, aren't they? Where are we going to go now? We can't go to Grandma's house. Well, it got passed down to my mama. It was hard, but mama was their only daughter. And he passed down to mama. That mantle sometimes gets passed down in life. And this is what happened to him. And he's like, you know, you don't, you don't want to get these things. You just inherit it. It's time you had to man up. It's now you're the daddy. Now you're the responsible one. I'm the parent. And he said, I don't, I feel like a little child. I don't know how to do this. And he said, I, I want to judge your people, but I don't really know how to do this. In other words, I want to make decisions. And he said, so I asked for wisdom and an understanding heart to take care of the job. He said, because you made me king. And I said this last week, when you realize he put you there, It'll make you step, make you put your shoulders up and go, if you put me here, then you're going to give me the ability to do it. I was listening to a man this week, his testimony, and he was talking about how he was, all this life, and all of a sudden he had his wife, his girlfriend had a baby. And he watched that baby, he said, it changed his life. I know a lot of men, and, and women, but men that change when that baby's born. Because all of a sudden it's not just a pregnancy, but there's a little squirming piece of flesh in your hands, and you go, this is my little girl? If you don't own a shotgun, you want to go get one. <laughs> yes. This is my little boy. Is he going to grow up like me? 
Can I do it better than maybe my daddy did? And a sense of responsibility that starts happening, it's very real. It's very real. I used to tell the boys, most of the boys that were locked up there where I was their chaplain, they, they were fatherless, most of them. And then all of a sudden, they've got all these babies already. And uh, you didn't know which baby mama was coming that week, but, you know, they had a lot of them. And, and I used to say, um, I remember one day I was walking down the aisle, and I, it just come out of me, and I said, guys, why would you want to trust the life of your child? Commit the life of your child to a girl that you won't even commit your life to. It came out of my mouth. I was like, whoa. I, 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 that was Holy Spirit. You're committing the life of your child to somebody you won't even commit your life to. And she's going to be out there and you can't protect that child. You don't know what boyfriend's going to come in next. You don't know. You see, these are things that are so big that we've got to train our, we gotta tr- train our children to some stuff. But all of a sudden, I don't know who your life got committed to, but this is where we're going to have to learn about commitment, meaning truly committing my ways to the Lord. I really need to know how to do this because if I just follow the ways of the world, it ain't working very good. It's not working. This plan, the way the world's doing it, is not working. We're suffering. A lot of us here are suffering from the consequences of, of years of people doing it their way and not doing it King Jesus' way when he wrote a manual. And he didn't just give us a hard copy manual. What he gave us, it's the most powerful thing, is the Holy Spirit within me. He said, I will lead you and I will guide you. You may not have two scriptures to rub rub together. You may not be able to quote anything, but Jesus wept. I don't know, but you know what? You have the living word. And that's the powerful thing to say, I don't have to know. I can pray. And even if I've made mistakes and i got children out there I have no control over, I can pray to the Father who knows all things and will listen to your prayers. And I can make a difference. I have to make a difference. But the key is, is not leaning on my reasoning. Not because I am ignorant in so many ways. I don't care if you have the best of families. We are ignorant and we do not know things. That's why we have to have a king. And what happens when I think I start knowing something, I'm in the danger zone. The reason why Solomon was so successful is because he knew what he did not know. He wrote in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not on your own understanding. If you lean on your understanding, you can miss it. We will make some crazy decisions that other people suffer for. He said, lean not on your own understanding, but trust the Lord with all your heart. But if you don't trust him, you can't lean on him. John said it during the worship service. If you don't really know he loves you, how are you going to lean on him? Oh, you might kind of lean on him, but you're going to keep one foot over here. Just in case I got plan B. At some point, I'm telling you, he knows how to pull the rug after me. There is no plan B. And you're on your face grabbing his ankles going, I, do, I don't know how to get through this night. At some point, he wants you. You can't let him be king and you be king. Well, you're king over that. Oh, I want you to be Lord of my salvation. I just don't want you to be Lord over my money. <laughs> Mind your own business, God. You know what I got plans for that? You want to be prosperous in your money? Just commit your, Lord, your money to him. And I'm not talking about giving. I'm just talking about trust him with your finances. Trust him with it. And put him first. Honor him. And, and the first thing you do, it's, a, it's the biggest trial of all of us, it's money. See, that's why he tests you there, because he knows. Money answers, I think it was Solomon, answers all things. I, it, that, that makes the world go around. So when he said, when you commit, you look and you say, you, you prosper me, Lord, and I'm going to give the first tithe back to you. It's saying, I trust you. I'm not even going to lean on my own to say how I'm going to pay my bills. Because if I, I do it my way, I can think I got this saved, and all of a sudden my tires went out, and I just spent $300 on a new tire and doing this. It's just crazy stuff happens in life that we don't have any, we don't have any control over. We might as well give it to him. He is, he is king. He's the one. And he's waiting for me to give it to him so he can have dominion of it. You can give him, I trust him with my salvation, but I don't trust him with my kids. I trust him with salvation. I don't trust him with, with, with my money. I trust him with it. And, we, and at some point he's saying, can you trust me with this, with all thy heart? Lean not on your understanding, but acknowledge the Lord in all your ways, and he shall direct your path. 
Psalms 119, 105 says, Thy word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. And that's not just the written word. That's the word he's speaking to you every day. If you'll stop and listen, he's speaking. Because John 16, 13 said, How be it when the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. 1 Corinthians 8 and 4 says, If any man think he knows anything, he knows nothing that, as he ought to know. It's when I start thinking that I know is when I get in trouble because that's when I start leaning on my own understanding. And it's always going to come up short. In fact, in Romans, he says, they profess, those that profess themselves to be wise, they became fools. He said they became vain in their imaginations. Then as their internal consideration, their thought, their reasoning, all of a sudden they start thinking they, they've got this. You ever been there? Thinking you got it? But this is what he said. We're going to have to cast down my imaginations, which just means my reasoning, my human reasoning. Every day submit it to King and say, not my will, but yours will be done. Now, I'm just going to hit on this because somebody just needs a, a little how-to. Take a couple minutes. We've been talking a lot about confessing and open the door to let out these things like what Bobby did this morning. That he opened the door right there and let some light in about his situation with his father. And he also blessed all of us with it by doing that. But let me give you a word, wise. Don't try to fight the battle in your mind, in your mind. Don't try to fight the battle that's in your mind, in your mind. Don't try to figure your mind out with your mind. You're sitting around trying to figure your mind out with your mind? That's kind of funny. Because the reality is, my mind, I, I'm, I'm doing the best I can. I have to do something else besides trying to figure, try to battle in my head, in my head. I figure my mind out with my mind. The way I fight those thoughts, he said, taking captive every thought to the obedience. We used to think it was the devil. I ain't captive no devil. I ain't interested in no devil. Well, I've got a full-time job trying to capture my own imaginations. I'm not fighting devils, I'm fighting lies. I'm fighting lies. And so all I have to do is be able to capture those things and I can't do it up here. This is why I fight the thoughts with, what's more powerful than a thought? A word. Because when it comes out here, my ears hear it first. But there's a power in word. Because word is also seed. It starts planting something. This is why I cannot depend on my thoughts and try to figure them all up here. I need to start saying something. That's why I said, well, even worship, praise, praise is saying something. Praise is saying, praise the Lord, hallelujah, you are God and I am not. Thank you, Jesus, I love you. When I start confessing out of my mouth, something starts happening up here in my head. And it comes out of here. When it comes out of my heart, then all of a sudden my head starts catching up. And so when I start speaking the word, whether it's the written word or the spoken word, I can get a scripture under my belt and every time I think I can't do it, it might be your scripture. You have those, we have those little sugar stick scriptures and all of a sudden I go, wait a minute. No, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I may be weak, but you are strong. I might be low, but you are high and lifted up. I may be limited, but you are unlimited. See, those those prayers, I call them comparison prayers. I do them a lot with the Lord. I'm feeling really low right now, but Lord, you are high. I'm really depressed, but you are the lifter up of my head. I can just start saying things. And before I know it, my brain catches up. And my feelings catch up. Because th thoughts create feelings and feelings create actions. We learned that with the criminal mindset. You start thinking about that money over there, that, that person. You start thinking about it long enough, where the mind goes, the body will soon follow. Is that not the truth? This is why we got to get our mind under subjection to the Father and cast down my mind. I don't even know what I need to think. Every time I think I'm smart, I realize I think I'm on dangerous ground because that's an old pride within us. The pride of life, we think we've got this. That's what happened to Adam and Eve. They wanted to eat of the tree of knowledge. I want to know good for evil for myself. I ain't interested in knowing it for myself. I want to know what he says. Because I might think something's good and it ain't God. Everything's good is not God. 
What's good for me is what's God right now for me. That's what's good for me. What does he say? Is this encouraging you today? I'm trying to encourage you. I don't have to sit around and fight this because we haven't got to him, but I'm telling you, these are strongholds we get in our minds. Lies that's been thrown in there. But I'm so thankful as I've looked at this, even if I've got a, a load of strongholds in my head, I don't even have to sit around and wait all day long to get free from these things for God to use me. And then one day I could be serving God. And just like today, all of a sudden, Bobby's up here getting free from his daddy. And he's been walking with the Lord some time. And Gary did the same thing when he got free from some of his mama issues. If you, you don't have to have it all right to, to get it right today. I don't have to know all mysteries. I don't have to know to be all so deliver, delivered. And I have many people say, well, I'm going to come to church, man, when I, when I quit doing this. I'm like, would you quit li- believing that lie? <laughs> when I stop doing that, you know, I'll come to church. I just can't go to church doing that because I feel like a hypocrite. A hypocrite is somebody who's lying about it, pretending you ain't doing it. Come on doing it, just don't lie about it. Yeah, I got high in the parking lot before I came to church. I don't care if you got high in the parking lot. Get high in the parking lot. I'd rather get high in the church parking lot than get down there somewhere and get yourself killed. I don't really care. God doesn't care about that. What he wants you to be is very real and say, this is just where I'm at. And you've probably come a lot further than you ever knew you've even come. The devil, he's accuser of the brother, and all he wants to do is tell you what you hadn't done right yet. God wants to say, son, oh, look how far you've come. Ooh, there's an old song that says, when I look back down the road, where I laid my heavy load. Some of y'all should know that. <laughs> Larry, do you know that? <laughs> no, he, said, he talks about when I look back down the road, I see. I see how far you brought me from. I can so around and say, Lord, I see you. And that old saying is so true. I'm not where I want to be, but thank God I'm not where I used to be. Oh, you've come a long way, baby. And that Virginia Slims. <laughs> they even have those now? I don't know. They made you want to smoke. God. Just look. It just look fine. I mean, no, no. The devil's such a liar. It's amazing what he can look, make look fine, isn't it? And then you get hooked on those things. You're like, dead gum. This was not the place. This is not so fine when I'm just craving and I'm fainting. And I'm like, how much did they go up? <laughs> oh, don't try to fight the battle in your head, in your head. Don't try to use your mind to figure out your mind. I'm going to fight my thoughts with his words. Whatever he said to you, don't you ever Forget it. Now you can get those scriptures that it'll be yours and he'll just speak to you and it'll become yours. Gary calls him his word. He gets his word. But there's other times I've looked back that God spoke to me personally. And I can tell you right where it was at and he brings it back to me. And I can fight the battles in my mind. When I remember the day I was standing out there in my backyard watering and the Lord said to me, I was having a struggle at work. I mean, I was having a struggle, and it felt like I was losing. And I was just grappling and complaining to the Lord. You know, he can handle that. And all of a sudden, he said to me, he said, the devil ain't running nothing. And I said, is that you? you? It couldn't be God. He said, ain't. God wouldn't use ain't. Isn't it funny how he speaks in our language? I talked back to him. I said, and I started laughing. I said, of course he would. I'm Texan. He knows how to speak Texan. And the next day, I was telling a young man at, 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 at the state school, I said, the Lord told me yesterday that the devil ain't running nothing. He goes, but his mouth. He spoke that to that, some juvenile offender. And I've never lost that word. The devil ain't running nothing but his mouth. God is king. He's Lord. The devil ain't getting nothing on you that you ain't giving him. Don't lay it down. Don't lay down your crown. He has anointed us to be kings and priests in our homes and our world. He's our king of kings.